In the previous videos, we looked at uh, how to derive the differential equation model for the potential across the capacitor, C1 here, after the switch is suddenly opened. And from that, um, we looked at using either the node voltage method or the mesh current method um, to come up with the same differential equation, although we found that uh, using a trick uh, in the mesh current method uh, was provided us with an easier uh, route to determining um, the differential equation. From that, we also determined that the system was critically damped. Now what we have to do is we have to determine the initial conditions uh, so that we can completely solve for the uh, mathematical solution that's going to describe the behavior of the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. Okay, so um, again, previously we had determined that this was a critically damped system. And we also need to know the natural frequency of the system. The natural frequency of the system is going to be given by the square root of k over m, which in this case is going to be the square root of 1 over Lc. You'll notice a pattern when we have an inductor and a capacitor in the system that this will be the case um, all the time. Okay, so we can also come back to our Excel sheet here and we can calculate the undamped natural frequency as being the square root of 1 divided by the product of L times C. Okay, the units for the undamped natural frequency are in radians per second. Okay, the damping ratio has no units associated with it. So now we know that that's 2 radians per second. Okay, now um, from our second order systems uh, worksheet, we know that if we know the initial conditions, and we can determine the initial conditions, that the general solution is going to be given by this equation right here, where the unknown constants um, a and b are determined um, based upon those initial conditions using the formulas right here for the critically damped second order system. So, the first order of business is that we have to um, determine what the initial conditions are. So to determine the initial conditions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the circuit. I'm going to um, determine how it behaves before the switch opens and um, right after the switch opens. All right, so we know that right after the switch opens, we have the uh, source that's connected to the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. Okay. Now before time equals zero, we have our resistor here, R1. We have an inductor, but the inductor, because this has been in a steady state condition, acts or behaves like a wire. Right, because uh, the magnetic field has been fully established and um, it's conducting as much as possible. All right, I have my capacitor here, but again, because we're in a steady state condition before the switch opens or before time equals zero, the capacitor behaves as an open circuit. And the switch connects us or connects uh, resistor two right here. Okay, so from taking a look at this, what I um, need to know, um, since I'm looking for the voltage, the output voltage, which is the same thing as the voltage across the capacitor, right? Before time equals zero, or before the switch opens, the voltage across the capacitor is um, the voltage that exists across R2. So right before the switch opens. Uh, it's the, um, the voltage across the capacitor is the same as the voltage across resistor R2. Now we know what the input voltage is. We know that it's 24 volts. Um, and we know the values of these two resistors. So what this forms is a voltage divider. All right, these two resistors form a voltage divider. And we can calculate the initial voltage across the capacitor. So the initial voltage across the capacitor is going to be given by Vn times R2 over R1 plus R2. Okay. So now we know that from the properties of capacitors, the voltage across the capacitor um, can't change instantly. So the 
um, immediately after time equals zero, or immediately after we open the switch, we know that the output voltage, or the voltage across the capacitor, must be the same as it was before um, the switch changed its position. All right, so if we can calculate this, which we can, we have all of the values, um, the voltage across the capacitor is going to be the same immediately before and immediately after the switch changes. Okay, so we have our x naught value. We can calculate that. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to calculate our um, calculate the rate of change of voltage um, across the capacitor. Now this one's a little more tricky. This is always the tricky case is determining the derivative initial condition. All right, so we know that we're looking for a term of dv out dt. All right, um, so we know that uh, from our um, properties of inductors and capacitors, we know that uh, the capacitor is what's going to tell us about um, something about the derivative relationship between voltage and current. So um, we know that I is equal to C dV dt. Okay, so somehow if we can establish the current through the system and know what the current is at time zero, right after we open the switch, we will um, then be able to calculate what the output voltage is, uh, or excuse me, the rate of change of the output voltage at time zero. Okay, now let's go back to before time equals zero. Um, right before we open the switch, if we're in steady state, we also know from the properties of the inductor that the current through the inductor at time zero is fully established, or excuse me, at the time right before we uh, open the switch is fully established, and we can calculate how much current must be passing through that inductor um, by using our Ohm's law relationships. Um, so we know the voltage is Vn, and we know the total resistance is R1 plus R2. Okay, so we can also calculate the initial current, uh, or excuse me, the current right before the switch opens that's passing through, induct through the inductor. We also know that from the property of properties of inductors that the current through the inductor right after we open the switch is not going to change because, um, based on the properties of the inductor, uh, current cannot change instantaneously um, through the inductor. So we know that this value is going to have to be the same. Uh, right after we, um, the same right before, the current is going to have to be the same right before we open the switch and right after we open the switch. And now we also know that the current uh, through the inductor is related to the, or since these are all in series with each other, the current through the inductor has to be the same as the current through the capacitor. All right, so we know that the uh, dV out dt relationship, or our derivative relationship right here, um, is going to be related to the initial current through the capacitor, which is the same as the initial current through the inductor. All right, so now we can rewrite this as C dV out dt is equal to, oh, sorry, at time zero is equal to I zero plus, which is equal to I zero minus. Okay, and these are all the currents through the inductor that we described, uh, that we found previously. So our derivative initial condition at time zero, which is, we're denoting as V naught, is going to be the current through the inductor um, right before the switch opens divided by the capacitance. Okay, so now that I have that um, information in hand, I can go back to my Excel sheet and I can calculate the initial conditions. Okay, so I know that um, my uh, <coughs> um, my initial condition is going to be the input voltage, which is 24 volts um, times R2, which uh, was 1 ohm, divided by um, R1, oh, excuse me, uh, divided by R1 plus R2, R1 
plus 1. Okay, so um, the initial voltage across the capacitor is going to be 4.8 volts. And the derivative initial condition is going to be based upon the current. All right, so we know that um, the voltage across was 24 volts, and then it's going to be divided by R1 plus R2, which is uh, 5. Okay, and then all of that current, so that gives us the current, um, the current has to be divided by the capacitance, C1. All right, and when we do that, our derivative initial condition is going to be 19.2 volts per second. Okay, now that we've calculated those values, the other thing that we need to know is what is the value of our forcing function. Okay, to determine the value of our forcing function, we're going to have to go back to our um, derivative uh, our di differential equation, and based on this differential equation right here um, that we've established, we know that our forcing function is what's on the right-hand side of the equation. So if the forcing function F, the value of the constant F here is uh, Vn, all right, and we also know that K, our, our stiffness for our system is 1, so F over K is still the value of the input voltage, which in our case is 24 volts. So um, I will go ahead and calculate or put that in here too in my Excel sheet. So we know that F over K is going to be 24 volts. Okay, now that we have that in hand, we can use our general solution for our second order equation. Um, and we can calculate these constants a and b. All right. So to calculate the uh, constant a, um, I can take my initial condition, which is x0, my, uh, yeah, my initial condition, which is x0, and subtract from that f over k. And uh, for B, the constant B, it's going to be the derivative initial condition uh, oh, plus lambda um, times F over K minus X naught. So uh, before we can calculate these, the, the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate our eigenvalue or our characteristic root. All right, so... Um, we also know that the characteristic root for the um, critically damped case is going to be squiggle times omega n, or the damping ratio times the natu undamped natural frequency. But since the damping ratio is 1, we know that um, it has to be, sorry, negative um, squiggle times omega n. So we know that this is going to have to end up being 2. Okay, 2 radians per second. All right, so now that I know that, I can come down and calculate B, which is going to be my derivative initial condition plus um, the characteristic root, or my eigenvalue, times F over K minus X naught, which is my initial condition. Okay, and that gives me the same value there, negative 19.2. Let me make sure everything is right there. Okay. And from that, now I have everything that I need to know to calculate my solution. So based on that, we find that um, the solution to this differential equation is going to look like this right here when we substitute uh, our constants, uh, our constants a and b, do a little bit of algebra on it, we wind up with the function that describes how the voltage across the capacitor will change after that switch is opened. And then we can plot this as a function of time to see uh, what this looks like as a function of time. And that's how uh, we can approach the first problem.